generate that interest or generate those, you know, uh, those connections. Um, but you know, as it sits right now, every day I go out and grind this stuff off people's windows, and it's very labor intensive, and it takes a lot of time and energy. So by the time the end of the day comes, I don't have time to sit there and do webmaster stuff and make a nice, beautiful website for people to come. I just basically I have a, a, a website up that has no links. <laughs> it doesn't have any. I mean, I'm building it. I'm also building a database for people um, that for the, the entire city to have their their establishment um, re registered the, and the damage that they have on their windows and the status of the repair and uh, I'd like to get that um, connected with 311 so you know people there's some kind of a sense of, of uh, resolve with, uh, with this problem because I know that it, that it has a tendency to undermine the, um, the dignity of the community and the merchants. So if I, I'm listening to what he's saying he needs help with a business plan uh, so that would probably be Urban Solutions uh, he needs help with possibly a website. He also maybe helps again. Urban Solution can help with a uh, uh, business loan, or, or you know. So there are some other some some generic things. He is a, he actually he is a Tenderloin resident. It's come before us about a business that he's been doing for some time, and that that actually should be dear to our hearts. That he's actually trying to improve our neighborhood as well as the whole city. So uh, I think it actually ties in with what the, the young lady was uh, talking about to us about a few minutes ago. Um, some people um, have an interjection about the building not fitting in with our community. I think that it would be very uh, strong um, of us as a community to, re to take care of and maintain what we do have if we like it so much and put our mind and our energy and our money and, our, and you know, where our mouth is with, with what we do have here rather than building new things that we don't like and, and compromising out our, our, our community identity to buildings that, that don't really fit in, like we said, just so we can we can add uh, amenities to the people that are here. There are people here that, we're, that matter, stuff like that, where nobody's um, uh, um, arguing that. And we do really want you know new structures coming here. Uh, I just think that it's important that we take care of what we do have okay, we here. Had, we had a question in the back. Uh, it was, it's actually more of a suggestion that in terms of uh, getting the word out, you might look to like high school after school programs and see if you can create an internship for a couple students to help like pass out flyers and they can actually go to all the places where they see um, vandalism on windows and talk to people and give them a flyer with your information so that they can contact you. And, Fantastic. And you know, maybe you can get some of the kids who are doing the vandalism in the first place and instead give them an internship and help them kind of... Well, the problem with doing the... Um, the uh, the equipment and the, and the education of the people that are doing it. Um, I didn't just fall on this. I'm a high-rise window cleaner, and I had to actually develop into. The, I think it was like she's just asking, mm -hmm. saying to help you with to get the word out, and yeah. so they help you right. be a be a mentor for a new for, right. for provider. We just don't want to train the guys that are doing it to. There is a group that except this that does do that. Uh, uh, Connects a mentorship to um, to organization, Susan. Yeah, I, the word I'm thinking of is apprenticeship, teaching this skill to others. Well, that was not what he wants to do, because oh, that's oh. too labor intensive. Oh, he's okay. Got to, um, he's, yeah. she, she was suggesting outreach. Yeah, okay. To get the, to get the right clients. I know, but I'm he's thinking of other people that be, might want to learn stuff. But he can't be doing that and okay. running a business. He's only yeah. the person running a business. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get a, a few more people interested oh. in what I'm doing, so we did get some cooperative spirit yeah, going, and that's okay. all. But first, he's got to get the word out. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Have you thought about crowdsourcing? I mean, you could create a web presence to get funding and, you know, the word out locally. Um, yeah, I, I looked at their the website, I think. Um, and to be honest with you, you know, um, I'm really just the person that's, that's, you know, it's my idea to do this, and I'm the person doing the work, but actually my wife helps me out considerably with that, who's back there. If anybody has any questions that they would like to ask her or, or give any information or, or request, recommendations to my wife um, before or during the end of the meeting or whatever, um, that would be perfect as well. I have quite a bit of work on myself. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much for thank everyone's you. time and, and uh, consideration. Okay, now, again, we ask all our presenters to wait until the end of the meeting, because uh, people might still ask you more questions. Come thank you. Mike. Okay, next uh, presenter is... Uh, um, 
Lee Simmons, and me and my wife Caroline purchased the building a couple blocks from here. It's uh, 466 Eddy Street. It's a past, if you look at the handout that we passed out, there is a picture of the building on the fourth page. It was an auto garage for uh, approximately 100 years. Wow. And we're trying to convert uh, the space into a holistic spa where we can do treatments uh, for the community locally and also throughout the San Francisco Bay Area. And what we're intending on doing is uh, bringing acupuncture and massage to the community. And we're trying to uh, create a Japanese-inspired space that uh, will be kind of a sanctuary where people can go and relax. We're also going to uh, put a tea room in the front of our space where we can serve traditional teas and do a Japanese tea service, as well as we're hoping to serve Japanese-inspired cuisine and have uh, sake available for our clients to come and relax and enjoy this space. Yeah, and so in the, the handout, we have um, we have kind of a, an idea of what our menu would be, our food menu, as well as the tea menu, um, and a little bit about, about us. I'm an acupuncturist, and he's a, a builder, and we really just wanted to move in. The space kind of inspired us. Um, we love the, the building. We don't really intend to um, change it except for to bring it back to how it was before. And um, did you get it? When we uh, when we purchased this building, essentially, what uh, what we found was is that there were a lot of developers that were looking to buy the same building at the time. And our intention is to keep the the same building as it was in the 1900s. In the early uh, 1990s, there was an earthquake retrofit that was done in the building, and they actually changed the facade of the building by removing the existing tr uh, historical windows and filling it in with brick. Our intention is to actually replace the windows at a fairly a fairly large cost in order to bring it back to its historical uh, quality. We want to make it exactly as it was 100 years ago. And what we want to do in that space is kind of keep, keep uh, the community able to come and enjoy our practices as well as to bring in other people from throughout San Francisco. So what are the cross streets uh, uh, on Eddie's that? Hi, I'm everyone. I know that works. It's, yeah, it's about a block and a half. It's across the street from. Uh, I asked that. And then the next question is: You've heard of the um, mass massage parlor auditorium in the town? Certainly. And, and so, therefore, how, how could you how could you propose a massage parlor? Well, actually, we we had not we had heard about this what the city's uh, the the city's issue and the police department's issue with this. Oh, no, no, no. We're, we're, we're not talking about the city. No, I, it's I, a tiny cove. We tiny cove in the neighborhood. So we had no massage. We had not. It was passed in 1998. So, so therefore, it's part of the zoning. Okay. So, so the question is, you now the show you 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 you're asking to change the use of the property from a garage into a massage parlor, which is against the planning code. I, if that is against the planning code, then yes, we are. Yeah, well, and, it, and it's, a, it's a spa, it's not a massage parlor. Definitely not. We're, yeah, I mean, the, But you probably meet those, under those yeah. definitions. We're certainly right. dealing with the massage part of the health department, and we right. certainly are dealing with the planning department, and we definitely have not been informed of any any ruling that would make it so that- Because you haven't done a fund planning. We, we definitely have. haven't. We We've have. been one year in planning. We were well beyond the planning department. Yes. I think the question is what's, what's a planning, what's a massage parlor under the planning code? I think their, their, their use of the massage is, I would say, a small part of a larger the health project. Yeah. The health department and the planning department are both supporting our project. What we intend on doing is we definitely are not putting a massage parlor in the tenderloin. What we're mm -hmm. trying to do is put a a spa in the tenderloin and be a, a but positive that's another word for it. Spa. <laughs> I mean, that's true. No, but we're listening to what you're saying, and we, we we're aware of that. But we also, like, our intention is to kind of come in and bring what like why do spas like why do massages and spas always have to be associated with that element? There's Kabuki Springs and Spa in Japantown that if you go there, uh, the the job. Job. you haven't recognized them, please. You, you're going back and forth, so stop. There's other hands up in the back. Yes. Uh, thank you very much for the time and effort and the focus you guys have put into so far for doing what you're doing. I think it's been successful. Thank you. Thank you.
my understanding is it's an alternative, uh, medicine alternative therapy type of environment. Yeah. We need way more of that kind of stuff. Right here. Yeah. We, we feel like we want to be very transparent with our business. We, we're very happy for the community just to be a part of what we're doing. And we, we certainly don't want to bring a massage parlor into the community little like poor in the city at all. I okay, mean. so I think the thing is you're, you're basically you're on the agenda because uh, you're seeking an alcohol license, so that yeah. should, we should be focusing on. And problem. so uh, what percentage of your sales do you predict will be your uh, for alcohol? Well, well as far as the, the ABC was going to ask you the same question, so. As far as versus food or versus in sales in our entire business? Oh, is the, we feel like I, I mean, I, I don't believe that I can give you a real number other than well, just you look around what you perceive. Are maybe for alcohol, maybe ten percent. Mm -hmm. okay. It could be, it could be less. But we feel that alcohol is going to be a strong part of our revenue, but we also feel that it's part of our tradition. Like what we're trying to offer is a, a traditional Japanese atmosphere meal, and in order for us to accomplish that, we feel the sake should be a part of our program. Right. No, no, I, we don't, I just, it's we just don't want to start sharing wine and liquor. So right. that's just a generic answer. No. So if you're just going to sell sake, that's it? That's yeah, it. that's our plan. Mm -hmm. We only want to sell sake because it's supposed to sort of go along with the cuisine that we're offering, the style of the business that we're doing. Because that's, I just want to focus on what's on the agenda. Sake. Right, right. Yeah, no, you're right. That is, so that was why you were brought here. Uh, any uh, other questions? Like, again, really what's on the agenda is about them applying for an alcohol license for their business. Uh, we can also talk about the business plan, but let's focus on why they're on the agenda. Um, and uh, okay. yeah. How long are you guys going to be open? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it like he's a already a business owner stressed out that needs some help. <laughs> well, I will say, Michael, that I've talked. I've met with them. I've talked to a lot of people about this. I'm pretty, personally. I've never been to Kabuki or the one, the, uh, the one in Baby, which seems like everyone I know has been to the. Uh, Fanya, um, the that seems to be it. And, and and I've got an incredible reaction. Wouldn't it be great if we had that in Tenderloin? Because only in two other neighborhoods in all of San Francisco, instead of opening some business which is everywhere in San Francisco. So if they can pull this off, I think it'd be great. If of course it's a hard business. But and I don't know that sake alcoholism is a big problem here in the, in the area. I don't know if there's any way to get sake here. Is there anywhere? Is it sold anywhere in Tenoa? Yeah. Well, there's probably some Japanese. Yeah. And We've had Japanese. Japanese. Are there in Tenoa? There, 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 there have been Japanese restaurants, whether or not they're still in existence. Yeah, I don't think there's any Japanese restaurants right now. Eddie and Van Ness is one. Well, yeah, outside, right? Uh, I'm sorry Mike. to uh, jump in again. Is there any, any questions that you would like to hear? Or, I mean, yeah, we wanted to get feedback from people that lived in the community as well to see, if, you know, if something we're coming in with something that's going to be appreciated and wanted and needed. Yes. Okay. Any alcohol would it only be consumed on premises, or would you yes. be selling? It? No, okay. it's it's only on premises, and it's only in the front of our space. We're we're not going to allow the people to take the alcohol out of the front area where our tea room is and where we'll be serving food. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, sorry, did you say what you're planning for hours to be? What our hours, our intention for our hours is, is uh, depending on the days of the week, we're going to be serving, uh, doing our, our tea room for the entire time that we're open. We're going to be selling food for the entire time that we're open. We're going to be offering our massage and acupuncture services probably from uh, around 11 o'clock to roughly 8 o'clock at night. On certain nights of the week, Month, it would be Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Those nights we're planning on staying open later until depending, but probably we would like the ability to stay all the way open until 2 o'clock in the morning. So could you, on a positive note, how many jobs do you think could be provided? We hope that we can provide maybe up to 15 to 20 jobs. So it definitely would be under 20, but it, it could be as, as high as uh, between 15 and 20. Just want to know your previous experience and acquaintance with the neighborhood. Well, I would say that there is, as far as previous, previous experience, experience with the neighborhood. Business, business experience. Previous business experience. I've, I've, I've owned quite a few businesses. I'm, I'm a builder and I have been for 25 years. I have a, a, a successful company at, at right now. Um, 
I, you know, I feel that I'm an entrepreneur as far as the owning a spa. This is the first spa that I've ever owned. Caroline is is an act, a licensed acupuncturist and has spent many years in practice and, and going to school and developing those skills. And, and this will be new for me as well. As far as owning a spa and as far as the tenderloin, our experience with the tenderloin, we, we love the tenderloin and we've been coming here for years, but we've never lived here. Um, why we purchased the property here was is because we we wanted to purchase a historical building in San Francisco, and this is where they are. And we found a historical building here that we feel was something that we were able to afford to build. And we went up against quite a few uh, large developers that wanted to, to tear this building down and to build an eight-story market rate uh, uh, structure. And we, we bid them out in order to achieve this goal. And I, I think that we're really kind of putting our necks out on the line for the tenderloin, and I feel like that this community, the police department, the planning department, everybody should be supporting us. We're a small business, and you know we put our entire life savings and all of our experiences into this one project, and San Francisco is a very difficult place to do work. And, and, you know, it is every day that, that we come up against different types of, of, of interactions, it, it, it often makes it more difficult for us. I love San Francisco because it's a liberal place, but it makes it very difficult for a small business owner. Sure. <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to point out that 41 licenses is exempt from the local PCM process. Um, so basically, all they're required to do is the mailer, but they wanted to go beyond that, and they wanted to reach out to the community groups and the police. And they're working with Captain Sheeran us very closely. So, um, and the planning department did, I guess, yesterday, according to Jim, uh, send a letter of determination that they're in support and approval. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's great. If we wanted to be kept up to date on what your what their status is as to your success with this thing, how how would we be able to? Uh, um, we can. Uh, we'll give you um, our. Uh, we have <laughs> a website that has just. We're going to start updating. Did you put them up, up here? Yes. yes. Basically, basically what's happened is, is that we entered into this process with the planning department in San Francisco a, a, a year ago. And uh, we're told that it could be a four to six month process. And we still haven't gotten through planning. So our intention was to put a website up that kind of showed our progress and allowed people, you know, was more of a transparent <laughs> uh, process so people could see, okay, this is where they're at. But we honestly, um, we have gotten nowhere other than just slowly getting through the parts of the planning department. So we have a website that shows a little. As time goes by, we will be updating with information and photographs. Totally understand. I'm just curious on the square footage. It's a 3,200 square foot space. It's, it's 24 feet wide and 132 feet deep. Basement? There's no basement. Oh. Is there a good, is there a good uh, what do you call it, a ceiling? Or the ceiling is in that roof? Yeah. yeah. Anything to do on the roof? Or no. And no. once it's the roof. We, we have no access to the building owner. We would love to have, believe me. <laughs> got a garden up there. We've tried to get access to the roof. Is there a backyard? There yeah. is no backyard. <laughs> but but the, 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 uh, the lot, is the so building lot? It's they go with the whole lot? Border, border to border. Yeah. There is behind us open space. Uh, we don't have access to it. It's the lot behind us. It's a, it's a, I believe it's a senior it's a residence that's on Ellis. It's a temporary neighborhood development building. Yeah, they own, you own most of the buildings next to us. <laughs> and you're great news. <laughs> Any other questions for? Yes. Do you, do you, would you object to being a YouTube sensation? <laughs> we don't object to any type of PR. <laughs> we want to, uh, we want everybody to come and enjoy our space. Do you, do you have a breakdown of how much it's going to cost for the different services that you're referring to? Because we are a low income neighborhood. We, so how would you cater to to the people, the residents in the neighborhood versus other clientele? Because like you may so, have that there are two other businesses in the city, and I'm sure they would have a higher. Uh, price point than you would uh, so be in this We area. could explain it like this, and, and she will tell you what our price is coming at. Our intention is to have lower prices, but throughout this process, our overhead has been going up as we go through it and as it takes more time. And even